There's a word from the Lord in this place on today. As we talk about moving the chains, it's important that we understand how to move the chain. We talked about briefly forgiveness on, on last week. And I know that so many people are wrestling with forgiveness and letting things go. And we, we have to understand that as believers, that that's one of the foundations of our faith, forgiveness. God forgave us, and he called us to forgive others. As believers, we must forgive. Jesus was, was real. Jesus was cold. He was like, he would give parables. He would make statements. He said, listen, if you don't forgive others, then your heavenly father won't forgive you. If you forgive others, then your father will forgive you. Simple as that. So when I look at that, I, wait a minute, whoa, hold on, Pastor Mike. So if I forgive others, then I'm going to be forgiven. If I don't forgive others, then he won't forgive me. Then, so it's kind of easy now. Like, okay, well, I didn't want to forgive it, but I'm going to forgive it because he's not going to forgive me if I don't forgive. Look at this parable that Jesus communicated. This parable in Matthew chapter 18, verses 21 through 35. AJ, he, he real. Look at Jesus. Just watch how real this. Come on, Sister Ann. Then Peter came to Jesus and asked, Lord, how many times shall I forgive my brother or sister who sins against me? Up to seven times? Jesus answered, I tell you, not seven times, but 77 times. So one, one translation said, uh, not seven times, but 70 seven. times seven. So he's saying not, not necessarily 490 times, but whenever your brother come and ask for forgiveness, then it's your duty to forgive. Man, I don't know, man, look, that's the fourth time he done stepped on my J's. <laughs> forgive him. So look, look at what Jesus is saying. Listen, like, like how many times his disciples want to know, all right, Jesus, what if they up to seven? Now, 70 times seven. An overflow. Unconditional. Just whenever they ask, you forgive them. Who are you to not forgive? Let's Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king. Who Listen wanted to this. To Therefore, the kingdom of heaven is like a king who wanted to settle accounts with his servants. All right. As he began the settlement, a man who owed him 10,000 bags of gold was brought to him. How many thousand bags of gold? 10,000. Was brought to him. All right, king, let me take, let me handle my business. I got this servant that owe me 10,000 bags of gold. He ain't paid me. I'm getting ready to handle him. Tuan, I'm finna deal with him. All right, let's go. Since he was not able to pay, the master ordered that he and his wife and his children and all that he had be sold to repay the debt. Hey, Mike, you owe me a little something. <laughs> so look, I don't just want you. I want Sherelle. I want Mikey, I want Michaela, I want Micah, and I want T. I'm going to Texas and getting them. I'm going, I want all of them, man. You owe me 10000 All right. Let's go. At this, the servant fell on his knees before him. Be patient with me, he begged. Mike, and be patient with me, Pastor Mara. Like, please, don't, 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 don't take my kids and, and don't go and T out of life down there. I mean, don't, don't. So Mike got on his knees and said, please don't do this. All right, let's go. And I will pay back everything. I'm pay back. I'm going to work doubles. I'm going to go to Fed. I'm going to pay back everything I owe you. All right, all right. The servant's master took pity on him. Okay, now. Canceled the debt right. and let him oh. go. I'm going to let you slide. I ain't going to slide on you. Everybody yeah. under 40 yeah. get that. But everybody <laughs> over 40, like... So we ain't, we ain't, we ain't, we ain't going to slide. We're going to let that ride. All right? All right. But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants. So now servants. I go out with, all right, now let me, no, 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 oh, no, no. Mike, Mike, it's just Pastor Mike. I mean, he's forgiven. So Pastor Mike go out. He see Rod. Oh, boy, boy, where you been? <laughs> Mike straight now. Boy, where you, where you been? All right, now what, what happened? But when that servant went out, he found one of his fellow servants who owed him a hundred silver How coins. How much did he owe me? Ten thousand bags. How much does Rod owe him? A hundred silver coins. Okay, let's go. Silver. Coins. 
He okay. grabbed him and be and began to choke him. Come here, Rod. Pay back what you owe me, he demanded. Pay back what you owe me. His fellow servant fell to his knees and begged him, be patient with me and I will pay it back. Now, of course, go back to verse 29. So, of course, he's going to do for Rod what I did for him, right? He's supposed to, don't he? He's supposed to. So, so, verse 30. But he refused. Instead, he went off and had the man thrown into prison on, until he could pay the debt. Come on, man. Let's go. I'm, you don't put nothing out. I want everybody. I want everybody. Wife, kids, the baby, the future kids. All of them. Let's go. Let's go. When the other servants saw what had happened, they were outraged and went and told their master everything so, that had so, happened. So now Andrew and, 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 and everybody throwing them ten. Hey, Pastor Mario, man, look, you forgave Pastor Mike of uh, 10,000, you know what I'm saying, bags of gold. And he see Rod, and he got the 100 coins of silver. And you, he, he, he didn't choke, he, Pastor Mike didn't choke this man out, had the man put in prison. So, so then the master called the servants in, you wicked. What did he say? You wicked servant. He said, I counseled all that debt of yours because you begged me to. All that dirt you done did. You done been robbing banks. You done been whooping folks. You been committing adultery. You been smoking dope. You been drinking. And I forgave you. And then somebody then irritated you or offended you and you ain't going to let that go. Shouldn't you have had mercy on your fellow servant just as I had on you? Shouldn't you have given him mercy, man? Like, that's my problem. You, I gave you mercy, but you can give him mercy. Let's go. In, in anger, his master handed him over to the jailers to be tortured until he should pay back all he owed. Now check out Jesus, because he's, he's, this is a parable. This is how my heavenly father will treat each of you unless you forgive your brother or sister from your heart. <sighs> unless you forgive them from where? Your heart. Your heart. So he's, ma he's making this parable and he's saying, now listen, the same way that this servant was done, he's this how your father will treat you. If, he, if I've given you this type of grace, given you this type of love, forgiven you for all that you've done, and then you're not going to forgive him. I forgave you for a, a greater debt than what I'm asking you to forgive him for. Unforgiveness. Unforgiveness is the single most popular poison that the enemy uses against God's people. Whew. Saints of the Most High. And it's one of the deadliest poisons a person can take spiritually. It causes everything, listen, people of God, I want you to hear this. It causes everything from mental depression to other health problems. Some have thought to believe that it could even cause cancer. And though it doesn't cause cancer, it can create a situation where your body's ability to fight off any number of diseases is severely compromised, including cancer and arthritis. Unforgiveness. So it ain't just about, I'm mad at my daddy, I'm mad at my mama. It's not about that. It's the effect that it takes up on you personally when you're walking in unforgiveness. According to John Hopkins' study, unforgiveness is linked to the higher incidence of stress. Listen, including heart disease, high blood pressure, lower immune system, anxiety, depression, and other health issues. <sighs> So you got underlying health issues, high blood pressure, de depression, and it could be linked to unforgiveness. Chronic unforgiveness causes stress. Every time people think that they're transgressors, every time that people think of their transgressor, their body responds. So whenever you think of the person that hurt you, your body begins to respond. The person that abused you, the person that molested you, the person that raped you, Y'all, listen, th this is not an easy topic. This is not easy because some of us have really been betrayed. You've been betrayed by an uncle. You've been betrayed by a family member, betrayed by an aunt, betrayed by an ex-spouse. 
You feel some kind of way because you've been hurt. Your mama was not there when she said that she was going to be there. Your father was not there when he should have been there in your life. And you're experiencing everything that you experienced, and this is real pain. So it's easier said than done for you just telling me to get over. I'm not just telling you to get over, but I'm saying that you got to follow the instructions that God has given us so that we can get over it. In other words, listen, living in a state of unforgiveness means that you are living in the state of chronic stress and your immune system becomes compromised. Chronic stress. So now your immune system is compromised. In other words, listen, my Lord, I want you to look at this, Ephesians chapter 4, verse 31 and 32. <sighs> Get rid of all bitterness, rage, and anger brawling and slander along with every form of malice. He says, get, get rid of all bitterness. Some of us are saved and we love the Lord, but we got bitterness on the inside of us, anger on the inside of us, unforgiveness on the inside of us, slander on the inside of us. We say we love the Lord. We go to church. We're preaching. We're praising. We're, 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 we're ushering. We're on the media team, but we have bitterness on the inside of us because of what has taken place or what you expected to take place and never took place in your life. And you're at church, but you walking in unforgiveness. Be kind and compassionate to one another, forgiving each other, just as Christ, God, forgave you. So, didn't I forgive you? Well, you forgive other people. Weren't you guilty? Didn't I exonerate you? But you can't exonerate them, but you can't forgive them. See, what people really think is, is this. Sometimes what, what happened, Bianca, is that things have happened in your life, and, and what, what you do sometimes is just, you don't, you just move on. You don't heal from it. You just move on. So, so you was abused as a child, and rather than being healed of that, you just moved on. So you was hurt in one marriage, and rather than being healed in that marriage, you just moved on to another marriage. You was hurt with, by one man, by your daddy, and rather than, than, than getting healed by that, you just moved on, and now you got hurt by another man. So you didn't get the help, you just moved on. You didn't get the healing, you just moved on. You didn't get the deliverance, you didn't walk in forgiveness, you just moved to the next situation. Without getting the healing that you need, God, I, I need your healing. I need your touch. I need to get delivered. I need to be healed of this. I need to forgive. I need to let it go. I just moved on. I'm just older now. I'm just 40. I'm, I'm, I'm 40, and all my life I've been moving on. I hadn't been facing it and really dealing with the pain that I've experienced, the pain, the, the trauma that I've experienced. I've experienced childhood trauma, and, and I need some help. Rather than getting the help of the childhood trauma, I just moved on. And I end up making my spouse, I end up making my kids, I end up making the church, I end up making other people pay for, some, for what somebody else did. So you pay for what my daddy did. You pay for what, my, for what my mama did. You pay for what my mama did not do. So rather than being healed from that, I live with resentment. I'm not trying to live with resentment. I don't want to feel like this. I don't want to. Some of you don't want to walk in unforgiveness. It's just, it's hard for you to get over what your dad did, what your dad allowed to take place. Man, you was expecting him to be there. You was expecting him to come to the game. You was expecting him to be at the wedding. You was expecting him to come to the graduate. You was expecting, and he lets you down over and over and over again. And it's just difficult for you to let it go. So what you say to yourself is, I forgive him but I won't forget what he did. See, so that's what we say to people. Yeah, I, I, I forgive, but I, I don't forget. Now, it's true. You're not going to forget it. But that's a telltale sign that you're really not walking in forgiveness. When that's your first response, that's your lead in. Yeah, I forgive, but, but I, ain't, I don't forget. Okay. It really may be that the fact that you really don't, you really don't, you don't forgive it. Listen, unforgiveness, unfor, listen to what happened uh, uh, to him. Unforgiveness emotionally ties you to a person for as long as you are carrying a grudge. Unforgiveness emotionally ties you to that person as long as you're holding on to a grudge. So, mm-hmm, mm -hmm, you're thinking about him. Mm-hmm, mm-hmm. I want him to hurt like I hurt. I want them to hurt like I hurt. I want them to feel like I felt. You were there for me as a child. And so now I got an opportunity to, to, to reject you, and I'm going to reject you. I'm going to make you feel how I felt. 
Mm-hmm. Oh, now, now the tables didn't turn. You know what I'm saying? So you was cheating at first. Now I'm out here cheating. Because, see, when, when I was at home, when I was at home and, and you weren't there, I felt the way. Now, because I was investing in the relationship, now I'm not investing in the relationship. And you want the relationship back. Now you're going to feel how I feel. Mm-hmm. Because I'm walking in unforgiveness. But, but when you walk in unforgiveness, it, tie, it, it ties unforgiveness. Uh, unforgiveness emotionally ties you to a person for as long as you are carrying a grudge. It is like having a scab. And just when the scab starts to heal, you peel it. That's what unforgiveness does. It stops your healing progress. It, it stops the healing process. Just when it's getting ready to heal, you, you peel it again. So you can't even, you can't properly heal because you're allowing what took place in your life. And you don't have under your shirt, Sharia, I have not forgiven my mother. I have not forgiven my accuser. I hadn't forgiven my, 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 my Lester. I hadn't. We, we talk about roots, and we go and we deal with our roots, and we, we in those sermon series, and, and I, I feel like I'm okay, and I feel like I've forgiven, you know, and I feel like I let it go, but, but really, every time you bring up this subject, or every time you bring up this name, something, it, I, I cringe on the inside, and sometimes I don't even cringe. What I do is I've, I've learned to just move on. I've learned to just, I'm going to keep it moving. I've learned to just act as if they don't even exist. I've learned to suppress it. I'm not even going to deal with it. I've suppressed it. How much do you have that in you that you've suppressed as if it never happened? How much pain have you experienced as a child to where it's so painful to you that you've suppressed it? And to get you going, to, keep, to get you moving, to keep you going, to keep you functioning, you can't think about it because it's too painful. So you just suppressed it and kept it moving. Well, you should be, Tim, well, well, I, I should be, I, I, God, I should be at your feet. I should be talking to, sitting, sitting in, in, in somebody, on somebody's couch, talking to them. I need help. I need counseling. I need somebody to mentor me, to disciple me, to walk me through this. But rather than doing that, I just, I suppressed it. I pushed it down. I've repressed it and suppressed it. I pushed it down and acted as if it never happened. And I just, I'm in a whole other relationship. I'm in a whole other situation. I'm in a whole other city. All this trauma on the inside of me. And it's eating me from the inside out. And I don't even know what it is. But I, but I know I hadn't let it go. And I don't think about it enough, Sherelle, but, but really, somebody else paying for my pain. I mean, I can't trust, I can't, I don't trust men because I couldn't trust my daddy. I was rejected by my daddy, so now I'm rejecting my husband. I was rejected by my mama, so now I'm rejecting my wife. Like that, y'all, that is real. And so when I get the healing, then my rejection issue is going to be in, in order. Do you understand what I'm saying? I, I have to get healed from that. All right, listen to this here. My Lord, my Lord. There are benefits of forgiveness. It's benefits of forgiveness. Studies show that people who forgive are likely to see improvements in their health. I take that. Overall sense of an overall sense of well-being and relationships with people who are close to them. Studies show that people who forgive are likely to see improvements in their health and overall sense of well-being. People that are more forgiving tend to be more satisfied with their lives. Oh God. Like how wait a minute. People who people that are more forgiving tend to be more satisfied with their lives and have less depression. Less anxiety, less stress, less anger, and less hostility in their life. People who hang on to grudges, however, are more likely to experience severe depression and post-traumatic stress disorders, as well as other health conditions. Okay, wait a minute. That's enough to drop the mic, drop the iPad, bam. Like, wait a minute, wait. Did, y'all, did you hear that, Brianka? Wait, people, let me, let me read it to myself. People that are more forgiving tend to be more satisfied with their lives and less, have less depression, okay, less anxiety, less stress, less anger, less hostility. And, and it's tied to my ability to forgive. So I don't necessarily forgive for you. 
I forgive for my well-being. I forgive for my mental health. You know, so so I'm, I'm letting it go because it betters my health. Not I'm just moving on and act like you don't exist and say I'm okay. No, I'm not okay. I go and face it. I go and deal with the hurt and the pain and the rejection and the abuse. I, I got to go and deal with it face to face. Hebrews chapter 12, verse 1 says, Therefore, since we are surrounded by such a great cloud of witnesses, let us throw off everything that hinders and the sin that so easily entangles. I got to throw this mess off, everything that hinders and the sin that is so easily entangled, and let us run with perseverance the race marked out for us. There is work to do, and I cannot do the work that God has called me to do when I'm holding on to old stuff that he called me to let go of. I can't do it effectively. I got to let it go. I, I must let it go. Like, like, Mike, Pastor Mike, that's where I come from to where, wait a minute, because I was trying to find a better word. So what I, I, I like to do a lot of introspecting, all right? I wanted a better word of selfish because it's, it benefits me when I forgive, all right? Because unforgiveness is like drinking poison and expecting your enemy to die, all right? So I don't, I don't, I don't want to die. Okay, so I'm not going, I'm going to forgive you then. Because if I don't forgive you, it's like drinking pause, and I don't want to drink pause. <laughs> Even though I want you to hurt, but the alternative is like, no, nah, it don't work like that. If you want them to hurt and you hold on to it, you end up hurting. You're holding a grudge. So it's easier for me to forgive because it affects me. So I have to work through it. Ain't just, I just, I just forgive. I have to really work through it. Take my issue, take my, my grudge, take my bitterness, take my pain, take my rejection, take my betrayal to God and give it to God and let God move in my life. All right? Okay. What, what's, what's forgiveness not, Tim? Forgiveness is, is, is not forgetting. All right? So Terrence, it's not forgetting. All right? So, so now, that ain't your lead in. Your lead in ain't, I forgive you, but I'll never forget. <laughs> Get out of here, man. But, but forgiveness is not forgetting. It's necessary to remember before you can forgive. So I need to remember what took place so I can forgive what took place. So in other words, I really have to go back. <sighs> here we go again. One of them sermons. Here we go again, one of them series. I thought I was good. I thought I was delivered. I thought I didn't have any will, ill will toward my mom. I thought that I was over the abuse. I thought I was over the rape. I mean, I'm moving on. I'm married. I got three kids. I'm okay now. I thought I was over, but maybe I'm not over it. I need to introspect. I need to check myself and to see if I'm really over it or not. So l let me, I can go back and remember it. And not be affected by it and not be hurt by it. But let me go back. I need to remember it so that I can get healed from it. So, so in order to forgive, I, I need to remember what took place. So, so, so forgiveness is not forgetting. I can't, I'm not going, no, I'm not. I didn't forget what took place. I know what took place. All right. Forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. Forgiveness is not the same as reconciliation. All right. So, so I can forgive you, but we don't have to reconcile. Because reconciliation takes two people to reconcile. Forgiveness only takes one. So, so sometimes you're saying that, well, I don't forgive because we can't reconcile. Or, or it, it's, we, no, no, no. I can forgive and we don't have, because it takes two people. If you don't want to reconcile, then, you know, it's, it, I'm okay with that. I still can let it go because sometimes we get caught up in this notion that my daddy still don't want a relationship with me in all of these years. My mama's still acting the same way. She, I, I still try to reach out and she's doing the same. The doors that she closed when I was 14, she's still closing the same doors now that I'm 44 years old. And so I, it's hard for me to let it go. I still can let it go, but there may not ever be any reconciliation. I said on last week, it may be people in your life that you're looking. You have, an ex, you have an expectation from this individual. You have an expectation for them to give you words that you've been looking for to affirm you and to say that I'm sorry for what I did. There are individuals, y'all, some of your dad is your father's, your spouse. They walk in pride, and they will never give you that apology, that affirmation, those words that you're looking for. And sometimes we hold on to that because we don't receive that affirmation. We don't receive those words. And you have to be willing to say, if I never hear it, I forgive you anyway. 
If I never hear it, if you never come correct, I forgive you anyway. Give up the expectation of them for them to say it. And that's tough because sometimes you're living with that person and you have to give up the expectation of getting what you think that you deserve. But, but what's the alternative? Hold on to grudges. You be bit drinking the poison. I got to give that up and, and, and I got to forgive him anyway. I got to forgive him anyway. So that's what forgiveness is not. It's not. It's not that. Forgiveness, forgiveness is not letting the guilty off the hook. It ain't letting the guilty off the hook. It's moving the guilty from your hook to God's hook. So it ain't letting the guilt off the hook. It's like, it, it, it's really, I'm, I'm moving the guilty from my hook to God's hook. I want them to pay for what they did. See, because this, this, is, why I want them to, this is why I want them to pay. Because we were married and you act like you was losing your mind when you was my husband. And you, you couldn't come home and we, and we got a whole family. And you wasn't, you wasn't, you wasn't being the husband you need to be, nor was you being the daddy that you need to be. And so, Joker, you get out of our house and you go to the other side of town. And now you can take care of somebody else's kids. And now you done had a child or two with her. And so now you daddy of the year. Oh, so I, I, you father of the year now. How you father of the year on, on the other side of town? But, but, but I got four kids here and you, you don't even know them. I have to, you know, it's their birthday. I have to hound you for money. I have to call the child support folks on you. How is it all of this? And, and, but you dad over here, over there. Y'all posting pictures. Y'all all out. Oh, you can go out of town. Oh, you take Oh, you do the TikTok dancing. I ain't, I ain't know you had that in you. But y'all, but y'all telling me to forgive him. I, I'm going to forgive him. But it's going to be some ties being slashed. It's going to be some eyes being black. It's going to be some, just let him go. No, we, we, that, 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 no, I ain't mean, not letting this man off the hook. You know what I'm saying? Like, I'm trying to make him feel it. I want him to feel what I felt. I'm stuck with these babies. I'm stuck over here. I'm stuck broke. I'm, I'm stuck. Uh, and you over there living your best life. It's hard, man. It's, 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 it's it's hard. It's, you know, I, I ain't trying, Pastor List, I'm serious. I ain't trying to walk in on forgiveness. I ain't trying. But look, that's, that's hard to let that go. It's hard to let that go. Like, let them off the hook. I'm not letting them off the hook. Anything I can do to hurt him, anything I can do to hurt anybody close to him, I'm telling I'm doing it. I'm just going to do it. No, I don't want them back. I don't want, but I'm going to, look, he got me messed up. But it's walking with the bitterness inside of you. But knowing that, hey, listen, let me let them off of the hook. But let me put them on God's hook. And, and I got to work this thing. I got I to work it because I got to work it from a standpoint of I'm going to put them on God's hook. But listen, I'm going to pray for them. And not, and not this prayer container. God, touch them. God, 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 let his heart be right. God, let him stand up and know that he's a dad. He need to take care of all his kids. Not just her kids, but all his kids. He got four kids over here. God, you touch him. He know him over his school. Need, and, oh, and don't let him be in the church now. Oh, now he in the church and he's serving in the church. But when I had you, you was on fentanyl. Now you saved. All this work I done did, I done been grooming him. I ain't, listen, I ain't trying to groom him for nobody. All right, okay, listen. I done had to deal with all these years of fentanyl and in the street and not coming home and all, and then, then, then you to get yourself together. Man, listen. Man, that ain't, that ain't, until I let him off the hook. Hey, look, I, I, I just, that ain't cool. Okay, okay, okay. <laughs> Forgiveness is not a feeling. It's not a feeling. It's a choice. It's the act of your will. It's not a feeling. It's the act of your will. So I have to be obedient to the Lord 
and I forgive because the Lord tell me to forgive. It's not a feeling I don't feel because sometimes you're not going to want to forgive. The feeling I feel like busting him inside his head. I feel like burning up his car. I feel like, so, so forgiveness is not a feeling. You still got to forgive even though you don't feel like forgiving. I can't be all in my feelings and allow my feelings to dictate what I do. I make a decision. This is a decision. Mike, if I lived in my feelings. Am I, am I, am I feelings? I have to repent for my, you know you saved me, you have to repent for your thoughts. How many of y'all be repenting for what you thought about? I ain't said nothing, I ain't looked at nobody strange, I just repented for what I thought. Like, well, I'll beat the snot out. Boy, for, forgive me, Lord. How you doing, brother? You doing all right? God bless you, man. God bless you. Good to see you. My So it's not a feeling. So regardless of how I feel, because your feelings are loud, you so regardless of how I feel, I have to do what I know to do. Okay. Forgiveness is not fair. Forgiveness is not fair. So you want me to forgive this person, and this person then dog me out. You want me to forgive this person, this person has snitched on me. This person has betrayed me. I gave my life. I done helped them build this business. I done helped them build a business. And now you want, you done found somebody else? Now I ain't good enough for you? Nah. So, so it's not fair to let them go and they dog me out. And all I get out of it is just uh, nothing. I, I, I forget. And he just walk or she just walk. No, man. Yeah, we ain't, yeah, uh-uh. But it's not fair. We want it to be fair oftentimes, Fro, when it's about other people. But we don't want forgiveness to be fair when it's about you. Because forgiveness is not fair. Because if forgiveness was fair, then we'll all be dead. If, it given, if we really got what we deserve, if it was fair, if God was fair about that, and said, okay, I'm going to give you, did, did we, the, for the wages of sin is death. For the wages of sin is death, but the gift of God is eternal life through Jesus Christ our Lord. So no, forgiveness is not fair. It ain't, it ain't, it ain't fair. If you got what was, was fair, oh, okay, so okay, I, I, we're going to be fair across the board then. All right, you did. You, all y'all did then. Because the wages, because all you done sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. That's what the word of God says. For all have sinned. Not some, but all. I've sinned. You, everybody done sinned. So if it's fair, so you better thank God that, that, that it ain't fair. God, I thank you, God, that forgiveness not fair. Because if it was fair, God, I wouldn't be where I am right now. God, I thank you, God, for you exonerating me, for stepping in, for forgiving me, for giving me another chance, God. If it was fair, I'd be locked up. If it was fair, I'd be under the jail. If it was fair, I'd be in prison. If it was fair, everybody got locked up. And God said, no, I'm going to bring you out. Forgive me. It ain't fair. It ain't fair, man. It ain't, it ain't fair. But God, I thank you. And it has to work on both ends. So when it ain't fair and, and, it, and, it, and it sort of feels like it's coming against you, you have to still let it go. How, why am I going to forgive him and he didn't hurt me and he ain't never been there? Because forgiveness has nothing to do with him. It has everything to do with you. You let it go. It stops your progress. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. It ain't fair. What is forgiveness? Forgiveness is a release or dismissal of something. That's what it is. It's a release or dismissal of something. I release it. I dismiss it. I let it go. Forgiveness is a deliberate act of love, mercy, and grace. A deliberate act of love, mercy, and grace. That's what forgiveness is. Oh, Pastor, you heard me. You, this, this is a bit much, Tim. You touching, you pulling on my heart. Like, it, it, it's because it's a hard thing to forgive. 
See, it ain't fair because some of y'all got y'all student loans forgiven. <laughs> Katina, you didn't mind it not being fair. You got yours forgiven, but he didn't get his forgiven. And it's like, because it ain't fair. It ain't fair. But when it's... See, when it benefits you, praise the Lord. Yeah. Some of y'all, we still, like, I just got all the student loans still, because I wasn't an essential worker or whatever, and, and these folks got the, golly, I should have changed my man. I knew I should have been in the education field. <laughs> Somebody holding on to some stuff. Just, man, what? It ain't fair. Them folks that forgave your student loans. If it was fair, continue to use, how, many, how much did you owe in student loans? How much did they forgive? So God has blessed her, in essence, with a $100,000 debt. God has blessed her because she owed that money. She spent that money. That's what it cost for her to go to school. She spent it, so she owed that money. So if it was fair, she would have to pay the $100,000. But because forgiveness is not fair, they forgave her student loans, and then she free of the debt. My God, my God. So you got to free somebody from their debt, from their pain of what they did for you. Even though it ain't fair, even though it don't feel good, even though they in the wrong, they at fault. Still, let it go anyway. It's not about them. It's about you. It's a hard issue, Pastor Mike. I preached a sermon called, it's a hard thing. This stuff is in your, you got to get it in your heart. It's a hard thing, Tim. It's a hard, look at somebody and say, it's a hard thing. Okay, okay, okay. All right. Let, let, let's, let's, let's bring my, um, my monkey trap out. Some of y'all know this. We did, we did this years ago, and some of y'all, I told Kashara the first service, I did this for her. She wasn't here when we did it before. Bring my monkey trap out. Yeah, this is for you, Kashara. The last, girl, you asking me what the last point is when we... Okay. She's going to ask that question. What's the last Stacey? I know. Forgiveness is not fair, Stacey. It's not fair. Well, it's a hard thing. That wasn't a point, but it is a hard thing. Amen? All right. So, 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 so in third world countries, when you have um, these hunters or these farmers just looking to catch monkeys, they set a monkey trap. They set a gorge where the monkey can stick his hand in the trap, and they put nuts in it, or they put rice, or they put something that smells really good so the monkey can, can, can smell it and then come to the monkey trap. The monkey can smell it, and he stick his hand in the monkey trap. Come on, Rod. <laughs> Not calling you a monkey or anything. <laughs> Sherelle said, come on, monkey. <laughs> he's a, but he's a, hey, 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 but he's a singing monkey. <laughs> so, so what the what the monkey does because the hunters are just they just put it out in this gourd they cut a hole in it, and so because they know that the monkey can stick his hand inside the monkey trap, and so now the monkey grabs the nuts. Now the monkey hand is small enough to go into the monkey trap, but he can't his hand cannot get out of the monkey trap unless he let go of the nuts. All right, so. He's now struggling trying to get his hand out of the monkey trap. But he can't get his hand out of the monkey trap because he's so fixated on the nuts. He's so fixated on the nuts that, that, that he's not even, and he don't understand. If I let this go, then I can get my hand out. But he don't want to let it go. And so the hunters or the farmers, they see him. And when they see him, they come up and they see him and they come up and they grab a hold to him. They got him. So now he's enslaved. Now he's in chain. Now, now he's messed up because he was so fixated on this that he ended up being. So put this on the screen. This is what happens. Because had he let this go, had he let go what was in his hand, he could have been free. But listen, if the monkey just surrendered what he was holding on to, he could have been free. But because he refused to surrender, he lost his ultimate freedom. If you hold on what's in your hand, you could be free. 
But because you refuse to let go of what's in your hand, you end up losing your ultimate freedom. Because you're holding on to bitterness, you're holding on to unforgiveness, you're holding on to grudges from years ago, and you end up losing your ultimate freedom. All he had to do was let go of the peanuts. And he could have gotten his hand out. He could have been free a long time ago had he let go of the peanuts. My question today for you is, what are you holding on to? What, what peanuts are you holding on to? Who is it that you hadn't forgiven? Thank you, Rod. What, what you, your hand is in the monkey trap. And the enemy wanted you to, he wanted to catch your hand in the monkey trap. And you so locked in on what's, non, uh, what's not essential, or what's not important. Of, of your past, your dad, I can't believe what he did. I'm just going to keep holding on to it. You ain't trying to, but it's just you hadn't let it go. Your mama, what she didn't do. Your ex-wife, what they did to you. The betrayal, what they did at the last church. What they did on your job and they let you go. And you keep talking about it and you keep rehearsing it and rehearsing it and rehearsing it. And you won't let it go. And because you don't let it go, you end up ensnared. And you end up stuck in a monkey trap. You can't move. You're, you're in a monkey trap. You, the reason you can't move is because you're holding on to what you should let go of. Why am I so stuck? Why am I so bitter? Why am I so anxious? Why am I so stressed out? Why am I so sick? Why am I so complicated? Why is it so difficult? What, what, are, you, what are you holding on to? I could have been further along. I could have been, I could have been further along, but I've been, but this is, this has been keeping me bound. And see, sometimes it ain't just unforgiveness. It could be anything. It's you're holding on to what you, an old paradigm, an old thought process that's keeping you stuck. Fear that's keeping you stuck. And I can't, I can't, I can't be free. So, what I want to do is, is, is I want God to just move, in, but I don't want to let go. God bless me in spite of letting go. I want God to override. Because sometimes in electric, in, in, with, with electricity, you can override certain things. So even though the problem is not fixed, God just override that. So in other words, let me nurse this stuff. Let me hold on to this grudge. Let me stay here for a minute. Let me keep rehearsing it. And you just override it. So I take this into my next marriage. I take this to my next church. I take this on my next job. I'm taking this monkey trap all along and it's heavy. And I can't keep being stuck in the same place. And the enemy know, yeah, I got him now. Because he won't let it go. What is it that you're not letting go of? What are you, what are you, what are you, what are you holding on to? If you let go of the nuts, you'll be free. You hold it. Hold it. And so the monkey didn't know. The monkey didn't know he thought what he was holding on to was important was more important than anything else around him. If the monkey could do it all over again, he probably would have let go of them nuts. He probably would have let go of that rice. He probably would have let go of what's in the monkey trap. Now you know you gotta let it go. Now that you know you must let it go, I cannot. Walking on forgiveness. Okay. Pastor, that's easy for you to say. It's easy for you to say. You ain't, you ain't, you ain't, 
So your childhood wasn't like my childhood. I hear you talking about your mama. And whenever you talk about your mama, I hear you talking about her with a sense of endearment. Yeah, she was bucked, but it's an endearment that you have toward that woman. Because she was there, she loved you, y'all partners, y'all friends, y'all close, y'all talk every day. And so, me and my mama didn't have that kind of relationship. So I can't see what you see with your mama. And so you, you just want, it, things didn't affect you like it affected me. And you weren't abused, you weren't molested, and you hadn't been divorced, you hadn't gone through all this right here. So it's just, you really don't know what I'm talking about. And the thing that I preach, with everything in me, I try to live with everything in me. Because I had to go back in this sermon. This is what I, my encouragement is for you all. To go back. Now, what is it I'm holding on to? Who is it that I'm holding on to? What grudges? And you got to go back and get in the face of the Lord. And say, God, because I don't want to be guilty of being stuck in the monkey trap. I may be in the monkey and don't even know I'm in the monkey trap. Because I still got some unresolved issues in my heart. I've just learned how to sort of keep moving. And I don't think it'll affect me like it's really affecting me. But maybe that's why I'm stressed out, though. See, this, may, maybe that's what the, where the anxiety comes from. Maybe that's why things are difficult, right? Maybe, God, maybe that's why it's unexplained what's going on in my body. I don't know, but God, I got to go back and I got to check it. Even though I feel like I've been delivered, Katina, I'm going back. I'm going back. You got to go back to the molestation. Go back to the abuse. Go back to the relationship with your dad. Go back to the relationship with your mama. Go back there. So I had to go back. I chose to go back in preparing this sermon. Let me go back and to see God because I don't want to stop my own progress. Like, like that's one thing. I'm, I, ain't, I ain't, I'm not about, I ain't going to sabotage you, but I'm sure not going to sabotage me. Like, like, like that, now that's me. God, like, I'm not going to sabotage you, Don. I want you to win. But I'm not sabotaging me. So anything that I can find out that I can do to move forward in God, that's what I'm going to do. I'm going to eliminate anything that's keeping me bound. So let me go back personally to see is there any things in my life, any, any things in my life that I had to let go, anything from my childhood, from, from other from old relationships, from my father, from my mother, from what I saw, from what I got, from what I didn't get. Let me go. Let me go and, and look at this one particular thing that happened in my life and to see where, where, where am I with that. Some of you have lost people in your life. You've experienced hurt, loss, rejection, grief. A few years ago, It was a man that was killed. Well, no, a woman that was killed. She was a police officer. And she was killed. And so I was asked to go and pray for the man that was in prison or that was in jail. They asked me to go and pray. I thought about it, just how that's going to look. And then it's like, yeah, I need to pray. Killed a police officer, a murderer, and asked me to pray. So I went and I prayed. And I got some backlash from... Maybe a couple of people. I know it was this one guy who saw and he was just how you you an, you, you 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 have an uh, uh, an informed congregation because they're allowing you to lead them because you're praying for a murderer. He murdered somebody and you're praying for him. I'm like, so I shouldn't pray for a murderer because he killed somebody. I shouldn't pray for him. Not God. Not, not God, let him out of jail, God. God, let him, let him out of jail. Don't let him do no time and forget the family that he hurt. It's just, I don't, I don't pray for him. I don't pray for his salvation. I don't pray that you protect him. I don't pray, God, Lord, that you arrest his heart, God. I don't pray. When Jesus was dying on the cross and he said, he said anything that he wanted to say, but he said, forgive them, forgive them, the people that was killing him, that were killing him. He prayed for murderers. Not one, but not for, for murderers. He prayed for his murderers. Forgive them, for they know not what they do. That's 
the kind of savior that we got. He prayed for his murderers. They were killing him. And I can't pray for a murderer. He, he, he ain't killing me. It was a bit easier to pray for that murderer. Because some time after that, I had a brother that was killed. Now, are we going to exercise the same faith and the same trust in a real life, in your face situation? Because when it happened, I was pastoring this church. And when it happened, I didn't want to do some pastoral type of things to the individual that did it. Because you still out and you still free and you still in our community. And people know you. And they know you did it. And there's snickering going on around us. And I had somebody who used to be a killer who said, listen, if he don't get locked up by this particular date, then he's not going to exist by this particular date. Listen, man, I still know some shooters. Like, I know them. You understand what I'm saying? So everything going in my head... So, man, listen, I don't just want to get him just because of what he did. It's, man, listen, I don't know if you're going to, I don't know what, what he owned. What he, is it some old stuff? I, I don't know what's going on. So maybe we need to go ahead and nip this in the bud. Since law enforcement not doing anything about it, and I'm talking to them, and they know who did it. But we can't move on it because of this and that. Torn, they had shell casings from a murder and another shooting incident that matched each other and we still can't do it and we know who did it and the same thing I did for that man that was downtown it's the same thing for the man that killed my brother I prayed for him I forgave him I believe in God for his salvation was it easy for me to do? No, it's not easy. Because forgiveness is not easy. And forgiveness is not fair. But I realize that forgiveness is not about him. It is about me. And I cannot, I refuse to walk around with anger, bitterness, a grudge in my heart. I can't. I can do it. But it hinders my sons, it, my son, it hinders my wife, it hinders my children, it hinders you all if I'm, I'm holding on to something. Not that it didn't hurt because it hurt. Before he got locked up, I'm on Facebook, seeing him at the shooting range. He got it, he at the shooting range. And I'm looking, I'm like, my God. And we're going to act like, so this is what we're going to do. What we, what, what we waiting on? What we waiting on to have? We waiting on the onslaught of murders to take place. What we waiting on to have? But I had to work through that. And it ain't like the next day, I forgive. I, no, no, I had to work through that, that painful time, that, those painful moments, those tears. To be able to get out of my mouth, God save him. God save him. God touch him. God deliver him. So I'm not telling you anything that I hadn't walked. My experience may not be your experience. My experience is my experience. And your experience is your experience. What I'm trying to help you with and, and communicate with you that regardless of what happened in your life, it's important that you let it go that you walk in forgiveness. Stop drinking the poison and expecting them to die. 
because the poison only kills you. I could not be around that house. Not had to worry. It was a process. But it got to a point to where I could pray for that man and forgive him for what he did. God is expecting us to forgive. If you want him to forgive, then you forgive. It's time to let it go. Come on, give God a hand clap of praise. Hallelujah. I went back there. How how am I how am I pertaining this? Because this would pass my it was what are some things that's happened in my life? And let me go back and check it. I don't have time, I don't have time for it. I can't, I cannot, I can't, I can't pitch my tent there. Not that I don't feel, not that I ignore it, not that I act like it didn't happen. No, it happened. It hurt. I hurt for a while. I still hurt. But I, I can't, I I can't pitch my tent there. So what I counsel, what I teach. I have to practice this. Sometimes you can ride past, you can know where they live, you can know everything about them. Listen, you can know everything about them. Do you hear me? Because when I do my homework, I do my homework, man. So everything about, hey, I want your mama to feel like my mama felt. Y'all don't, you understand what I'm saying? So everything, or let me stop there. You know, so, so it's everything. God, let me take my hurt to you. Let me take my pain to you. Let me take my brokenness to you. Let me give it to you, God. And God, you heal this broken heart of mine. I told you I got a partner of mine that said that he was hurt really bad. And he said he was telling God about it. He said, God told him, give me your heart. Let me heal it. Now, let me give it back to you. Now, go back out there and get it broke again. In other words, don't make them pay for what they did. So if you hurt me, guess what? I can't make you pay. I'm still going to open myself up to you. If you hurt me, I can't make you pay. I'm still going to, I'm not going to make, uh, Pastor Mike, he walked away. He, not, but like, whatever. Because what God has done to me, what God has done for me, that's the expectation that he has for me to give to others. He who has been forgiven much, loveth much. He who has been forgiven much, God has really forgiven me, Katina. So I love him with everything in me. If he didn't reach way down and pick me up, if he didn't brought me from the miry clay, if he didn't brought me out of this garbage and junk of my life, who am I to hold a grudge and to walk in unforgiveness for what somebody else has done? It's time to let it go. Even some of us, we walk in unforgiveness toward God. Not that you can pardon God for what he's done, but you walk in unforgiveness because ultimately God is responsible. Ultimately God is in control. So if it happened, God allowed it to happen. Not that he made it happen, but he allowed it to happen. So it's you looking at God a certain kind of way. Why did this have to be my life? Why did this have to be my story? Why did I have to go through these things? If you really God and you walked in unforgiveness with God, why this gotta be my situation? And you got to let that go. You got to forgive him, God. I forgive you for being silly. I forgive you for acting the way that I've acted. I forgive you, God, for holding a grudge against you. I was, it was silent. It was a silent protest. I was mad. I kept coming, but I felt some kind of way about you. It's okay. You can feel some kind of way. But when you feel that kind of way, then you take it to God. David took it to God. David didn't go outward. David didn't go outward at all. David went upward. He said, God, I'm taking this. I feel some kind of way too. But I'm going to take it to you, God. I ain't telling everybody about it. I ain't saying God ain't real. I ain't changing my religion because something happened that I didn't want to happen. I'm taking it to you. And when you take your broken heart, when you take your pain, when you take your grudges, when you take your unforgiveness to God, God will heal you like only God can heal you. Get your hand out of the monkey trap 
and be free in Jesus' name. Come on and give God a hand clap of praise.